Welcome back. We are here on eTero and this is going to be my daily forecast for Monday, February 1st, 2021. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button, the bell button to see our newest videos, and you're welcome to join us over at Patreon if you want to get access to our full technical analysis, our signal service, and also our online trades and courses. The link is down below. You're very welcome to join. So we'll start by looking at the foreign exchange market, the cryptocurrency market, and then we'll look at the commodities market and precious metals market. So let's look at, um, at uh, the US dollar index first. And on Friday, and basically last week, we were rallying quite substantially in the US dollar. So it has been on a, rallying, on a rally basically from the bottom here, roughly 89.13. So we reached up towards 90.85, that is basically where we peaked right here, just below the 50 moving average. However, on, on Thursday, we pierced the uh, 50 moving average and yet again on Friday. At the moment, we have settled in between the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average. Question is whether or not we are going to uh, go down from here or if we continue this rally. We have tried to pierce the 50 moving average several times in the past, for example, here and here, this entire area was back in September, October, and uh, in the beginning of November, and then we just fell apart. So m one of the main reasons why we see this um, um, see this rally is because we're not talking about stimulus. As soon as there's going to be talk about stimulus, uh, there is going to be um, a decline in the US dollar. So in the long run, the US dollar will continue to depreciate. That would be really strange if it didn't. You will have all this money being pumped into the system and that should actually work against the US dollar. But occasionally you will see these rallies and that will also have major implications for example, the indices, stocks, um, commodities, precious metals and so on. When this goes up, everything else tends to go down. So the stocks have, for example, been rallying since the beginning of November and now they're having a pullback. So they fell roughly uh, four to six percent last week and whether or not they continue falling that is to be seen. If this basically starts falling again then we'll probably see a rally in the, the indices and stocks and also in gold and oil for example. So we'll start by looking at the Great British Pound US dollar. And as you can see, we are in this really nice channel here. Actually, the bottom of this market is the 50 moving average. And you could also enter this market at the 20 exponential moving average. So it has bounced off the 20 exponential moving average uh, more often than the 50. So if you can get the chance to buy at the 50, uh, when it basically touches the 50, that is basically your probably your best entry. Um, we haven't seen a lot of movement here. It has been really resilient uh, towards the uh, appreciation of the US dollar. And that is that is really good news for uh, for the Great British Pound and the US or this currency pair. Uh, you, I wouldn't expect this to fall all the way down towards the 50 moving average uh, when considering the US dollar has been appreciating the last uh, few trading days. But at the moment, we're trading at 13.69. And uh, yes, it is just a matter of buying when it touches the 50, 20 exponential and buying a lot when it touches the 50 with a stop loss underneath the 50. And long term target is 14. So 1.4. That is probably something we'll see in the next month or two. So let's look at the US dollar again. So there was a lot of movement in this currency pair. We actually broke through uh, the previous channel. So we had, we've been within this channel for a really long time and we actually broke the resistant area. So we also have a lower, um, lower channel here, but that's not really interesting at the moment because the question is how far this will rally. Will it rally all the way up to the 200 moving average? That is to be seen. We are getting uh, fairly overstretched here. We can look at, for example, the, the Bollinger Bands, how far we are actually above the Bollinger Band. So we can see that we are 
actually quite far above the Bollinger Band. And the question also be whether or not we'll break below this uh, former resistant line again. So we'll have a pullback towards this resistant line. And if we break through it, then you could probably we could probably go back into the channel that we were, or this could basically break towards the resistant line and then bounce. And if that is the case, then there's a huge um, there's a huge uh, possibility that we will actually start trending upwards. So if this will act as res uh, support now instead of resistant, then we can actually go and trend upwards. But 200 moving average will be a massive resistance for this currency pair. We can see that we have already started the pullback because we are getting very overstretched here in the bullish band. And uh, yes, it will be really interesting basically where this opens when the market opens again. Technical indicators are all very bullish at this point. MACD, Stochastic, CCI, and also the RSI are all pointing to higher levels. But when you're this... Uh, far outside of the bullish band, expect a pullback at least towards this resistance line, uh, roughly at 104.19. We are on the edge of being overbought, we are 64, so yes, it's going to be interesting to see what basically happens here. So let's look at the euro US dollar. So you can see that we are at the edge of the 50 moving average here. We're quite far away from the bottom of the bullish band. Technical indicators are either flat or um, or bullish at this point. So if the US dollar uh, starts to depreciate, you will see a massive rally in this. So just pay attention what happens in the US dollar. If this um, if the US dollar starts appreciating, then this will fall even further. Then we'll most likely go to these previous highs here. That is roughly at 11.92. And lower than that, we'll head towards the 200 moving average. We haven't basically been at the 200 moving average for a very long time. Last time we basically crossed the 200 moving average was back in April last year. But 50 moving average is holding at the moment. We are trading just above the 50, underneath the 20 exponential. Um, so we'll see basically what happens here. It is, um, in my case, I would guess that we'll basically rally from here. If we do that, then we have the highs here of 1234. That is basically going to be our target. Long-term target is be it will be 1250. So let's look at the Aussie US dollar. So this fell quite aggressively on Friday and also on Thursday. We fell way below the Bollinger Band here and then pulled back. And then on Friday, we continue this fall. So there is going to be a bottom here. I think that the 50 moving average will be a, uh, will be massive support for this currency pair. We're on the edge of the Bollinger Band. Technical indicators are fairly mixed. Their effects actually uh, very bearish at this point, but the CCI is turning around quite aggressively. We're underneath minus 100, so it's still bearish. Stochastic is bearish, MACD is bearish, and the RSI is also bearish. So we could be heading towards the 50 moving average, and that is at 0 0.7581, and then we could see this rally continue. So long-term target is 0 0.80. That is where we are most likely going to head to. Head to. Um, I don't see this falling below the 50 moving average, but we'll see. It kind of depends also on the US dollar index, but buying it at the 50 moving average at 0 0.7573 with a stop loss underneath the 50 moving average, that should be a fairly good trade. So let's look at the US dollar, Canadian dollar. So you can see that we have tried to rally both on Thursday and also on Friday, and we pierced both the 50 moving average and the, and the Bollinger Band, and now we are pulling back quite aggressively. So both for the US dollar, no, for the Aussie dollar and also the Canadian dollar, oil has significant uh, uh, influence on their currencies, as uh, or also on the, and the, the demand for, you know, for precious metals and so on in, in Australia will basically increase the value of the Aussie dollar. So as those 
uh, precious metals and commodities basically um, the demand for them declines then the demand for their currencies also declines in the value as well so there those are also factors that play in there not just the US dollar index or US dollar so we saw oil for example uh, on decline copper being on decline and so on and all of those things uh, are also factors that play in in these currency pairs so at the moment US dollar Canadian dollar is trading between the 50 moving average and the 20 exponential moving average we did touch the 20 exponential and then pull back if you look at technical indi uh, indicators MACD is bullish at this point stochastic is bullish the CCI is turning around quite aggressively and so is RSI so we could see this pull back so we have been in a downtrend for a very long time and every single time we have basically touched the upper part of the bullish band for example here and also here and we can go way back here and here it has fallen quite drastically so just keep that in mind um, it usually goes gradually to the upside or gradually to the downside when we have these rallies that basically pierce the, uh, the upper part of the bullish band we have a very aggressive uh, move to the downside so we could be witnessing that um, in the next coming days so let's look at the cryptocurrency market so look at Bitcoin so most of the cryptocurrencies have been uh, basically on a decline for the last two three weeks you can see that Bitcoin um, reached the top of the uh, of its value here at uh, 41,660 a massive move to the upside here and since then it has declined all the way down towards the 50 moving average so you see this major move here from uh, 31 all the way to uh, 37 I think 38 that was basically Elon Musk putting out a tweet so apparently tweets of uh, very influential people and very powerful people have major effects on the markets and uh, whether or not you take that as market manipulation um, probably um, there probably should be some kind of law that prevented these people from basically affecting the market in this way which I'm pretty sure that they actually are doing Donald Trump certainly did that when he was in office so so but since then it has been in decline yet again so even though these uh, very influential people put out uh, tweets that basically rally rallies these markets they fall down really fast and that is not a good indication for for Bitcoin what we can see as uh, say at least is that a 50 moving average is holding and as long as that is the case we'll probably go gradually to the upside 40,000 will most likely be our target however if we break the 50 moving average we are going to go significantly lower so 30,000 40,000 will mostly be our long-term target 30,000 is at the moment kind of the bottom but if we break the 50 we can see this go to 27,000 to 23,000 and lower than that if you look at the Fibonacci retracement for Bitcoin we can see that the first one is here at 30,000 second one is here 26,000 and then the last one is here at 22,000 so I would not be surprised if we fell down to this level here it would actually be a very good thing because then you could basically enter in a lower uh, price level and well you could basically double your money when it goes back to 40,000 um, yes but overall for Bitcoin it has um, the highest value but it's not the cryptocurrency that has been growing most the recent dates most of the other bigger uh, cryptocurrencies have also uh, been gaining speed and they have actually been outperforming Bitcoin if you look at technical indicators at least for Bitcoin uh, they are fairly mixed they're either flat or they are bearish at this point so it'll be interesting to see another test of the 50 moving average a break of the of that that could open the door all the way down to 22,000 so let's look at the term 
So as you can see, Ethereum has been outperforming Bitcoin the last two, three weeks. Uh, 20 exponential moving average is actually the bottom of this market. We have not been trading underneath the 20 exponential for a very, very long time. We have to go all the way back here. This was in uh, November or the beginning of November when we were trading at $385 for, for Ethereum. Now we're trading at uh, $1,334. So it has been absolutely parabolical, uh, but it has been trading flat in recent days. A fall below the 20 exponential opens the door to the 50. That's at roughly at 1,000. And a break below the 50 opens the door to the 750. And also the 200 moving average at the 550. So this could move to the downside. That is possible. But at the moment, it is outperforming Bitcoin and most of the other cryptocurrencies as well. And the 20 exponential is holding really, really well. So the next uh, target for Ethereum is 1500. That is the next target. And then 1750 and beyond that. So at this moment, it is going gradually to the upside. Actually, much better that it goes this gradually and the 20 exponential is holding this well because it is uh, easier to trade it. So let's look at XRP. I had actually deleted this from my list, but now we can see movement in this cryptocurrency. It has been absolutely parabolical. Whether or not this is one of those cryptocurrencies that have been affected of the Reddit chat or so on, or so on that is to be seen. But you have seen other um, <laughs> cryptocurrency like it, Dark coin, I think it's called, has been rallying because of, I, I think it's a chat on Reddit as well. So whatever these people are chatting about on Reddit, those things are apparently exploding to the upside. So we have seen this massive move for uh, for XRP. While Bitcoin has been on decline and, and uh, Ethereum has in the increased, XRP has also increased. So we have almost doubled the last uh, three trading days. We went from... 0.26 and now we're trading at 0.745 so there is a heck of a lot of money to be earned in this cryptocurrency however there's also a heck of a lot of money that can be lost trading this cryptocurrency but i did say that i was going to consider buying into this when it broke the 50 moving average and when it started to bounce from the 50 moving average we are not there yet we are need to need a pullback towards the 50 and to see whether or not that holds. If that is the case, then yes. This is certainly something that you actually can put a little bit of money into because if it will in probably five, 10 years from now will be worth 100 or $500, then you will certainly make up a lot of money from that small investment. And that is probably what people are looking for for these minor cryptocurrencies. You, it is not possible to gain that amount of money in, for example, on in Bitcoin at the moment because it's valued at over 30,000. 30, These are valued of 0 0.30. So the value to the upside is enormous if they start rallying like Bitcoin and Ethereum and so on and so on. So that's probably the reason why people are buying into this. However, at this point, it is significantly overbought. It is very overstretched. If you look at the uh, at, uh, Bollinger Band, we can see that we are way outside of the Bollinger Band. Last time we were at was here. It fell all the way from 77 and all the way down to uh, 0 0.16. So just keep that in mind. If it gets out uh, of the Bollinger Band here, it can drop quite drastically and lose um, more than half of its value in very, very short time. But a pullback towards the 50, if that holds, then that is a really good sign that this could trend slowly to the upside. So let's look at uh, Litcoin. So Litcoin has been falling. Um, this was, was looking really promising due to the fact that it, it did not have this parabolical move as most of the other cryptocurrency did. It did, value, it did grow significantly. It doubled in value, for example, in, uh, in uh, two months' time. But since then, it has dropped all the way down to 120 
nine at this current stage. So bottom of the bullish band here was major support. The 50 moving average is also acting support as supportive. Question is will, will be whether or not we rally here from the 50 moving average. If we start breaking below the 50 moving average and it becomes a resistant instead of support, then that is a very bad sign. Then we could fall all the way down to the 200 moving average. I would guess that 100 would be a major support as this was major risk, uh, support back here. Uh, but break below these areas here, that opens the door to 200. I don't think that it's going to happen. I think that we're going to rally up towards 150 and then target these previous highs again. But um, at this point, technical indicators are fairly bearish for this cryptocurrency, so it could actually fall even further. So let's look at NEO. So as you can see, we also had this major move to the upside up towards the $28 and then fell all the way down to $20. Um, 50 moving average is acting as support. We reached the bottom of the bullish band here. Then we actually get all the way down to the 50. But 50, 200, right underneath, that should be major, major support for this cryptocurrency. So this is usually called the Chinese NEO, uh, not, not, the, uh, not the Chinese NEO, but the Chinese Ethereum. So it has the same, it is basically in the same market and it's, it's competing against Ethereum. And um, I've been very bullish on this due to the fact that I think the Chinese are may, way more into cryptocurrency than we are here in the West. We have just been focusing on Bitcoin as uh, as something to trade and to to uh, earn money on, they are actually focused on this as a way of life. They see it as a part of their economy, a part of their society, and um, something that probably is not going to go away um, anytime soon. It is just going to be bigger and bigger, and therefore, I'm fairly more bullish on this cryptocurrency than any other cryptocurrency that is out there just because the market over in, in Asia is enormous. And if this becomes the way that the Chinese basically do their transactions and so on, then this will be worth at least the same as Bitcoin is worth today. So it'll be really interesting to see where this is going the next five to 10 years. Um, my guess would be a heck of a lot higher than $22. Um, $22. This is probably going to go much, much, much higher. If you look where it basically started, it was way up here. So that wasn't even this a daily chart. We can look at the weekly chart and it will show it much better. So it was way up here, 134. Um, it was. So, yes, if it goes back to those levels, then there is a lot of money to be earned in this cryptocurrency. But if you look at where we are most likely going, um, we, the 50, 20 exponential moving average is acting as resistant. A fall towards the 50 moving average at roughly $19, $20. That should be your entry point for a buy in. Target here should be the highest here of 28. So that's almost, uh, yeah, that is a fairly, fairly uh, good profit. But I would basically consider just holding this for several years. If it falls towards these levels here, you probably won't see this again. I don't see this falling below the 200 moving average uh, without this market completely falling apart at some point. So, so 50 moving average is the bottom at this point. And um, that is probably as cheap as you will get this um, ever again. Probably. So let's look at the commodities market and the precious metals market. So we'll start by looking at oil. So... Oil did fall quite drastically on, on Friday session. We did rally up towards uh, uh, $53, and then we fell towards the middle of the Bollinger Band, and now we're trading just about the uh, 20 exponential moving average as well. So if you look at technical indicators for oil, they are basically looking very, very dreadful. But we are, we are above support. So 20 exponential has been a major, major support in this market. We did get outside here and we pulled back, just trading technically sideways, a little bit of downslope, but technically sideways into the, the 20 exponential moving average. 
And I would say that it is very likely that we'll pop to the upside from here. Um, if we were going to see a major move to the downside, it would probably have happened already. So if the US dollar, for example, starts to depreciate, which is very likely that it will do, then we'll see oil start rallying to the upside. And 55 will most likely be our short-term target. That is, uh, that is only $3 from here. And after that, 60 will probably be the highest target that we'll get to in the near future before we'll see this pulling back. So I could see this market trading in between um, somewhere between 60 and $50 uh, for the foreseeable future, like it did prior to the coronavirus. So it was trading uh, at a highs here, roughly at 65, the very, very highs, and at the lows, roughly at 50. So um, it usually trades in the 10 to $50 range, and that is most likely where we are going to head back to. Even though the fundamentals for the world economy are not there at the moment, this is most likely where we're going anyway. So, so speculation has probably been the main reason why we have been rallying this far. So, for example, vaccines was the first part of this. Then was the news of uh, stimulus, and since then we haven't had any vaccine, good vaccine news really. The last vaccine that came out wasn't really good news, and we haven't had stimulus talks. Uh, and you can see basically where we are going. We are going slowly to the downside. Next time we're going to talk about uh, stimulus or something like that, this is probably going to pop to the upside. So let's look at natural gas. So as you can see, we are just doing more of the same. Um, I kind of said on on. Thursday and on, on Wednesday as well, that this is just a continuation of the same moves that natural gas had been do, has been doing for the last few months. So all the way back to the end of October or the beginning of November, we topped in this market at 3.389, fell down, rallied, fell down, rallied, and so on and so on. And we're just seeing a continuation. We're actually starting to trade sideways at this moment, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to test the 200 moving average at some point. We're getting out of the winter months in only a short period of time. And um, if this was going to pop to the upside, it would have happened already. So a break below the 200 moving average opens the door to roughly uh, 2.1 and then to 2 and to all the way down to 1.5. That is most likely where we're going to head to. So, yes. I haven't traded this market since we basically were there. I was pretty sure that when we hit the 200 moving average that we were going to rally. That did happen. The uh, question was whether or not we were going to rally above the 50. That did not happen. So we have tested the 50 and the 20 several times. It has broken down every single time. And um, this just looks like uh, another continuation. So the bottom of this market is definitely 200 moving average at the moment. So at 2.3. If we have to be break below that, then we are going to go much, much lower. So let's look at copper. So copper broke down all the way down to the 200 moving average, no, not the 200 moving average, the 50 moving average at the 3.53 and settled there. So I am expecting a rally in copper. I did expect it actually uh, before that. I but, uh, but uh, US dollar was appreciating and that was basically working against this market and most of the other precious metals. So at this moment, we have settled right above the 50 moving average, actually a perfect place in order to, to buy this. So target here is 3.75 with a stop loss right underneath this previous spike here. So roughly at uh, 3.47, that's where you should Put your stop loss and a target of these very highs. I would not put a, a whole lot of leverage into this. This is just um, if the US dollar, for example, starts to um, depreciate, then you will see this spike to the upside. You can look at the technical indicators as well. They are still very bearish, so they have not turned around. You can look at the four hour chart and one hour chart to basically see when this starts to turn around. 
For example, the four hour chart will be really helpful in this case. So let's look at gold. So as you can see, on Friday, we had this enormous spike. We rallied quite significantly all the way up towards 1875, and then we broke down below the 200 moving average again. So still, the analysis I put out for, for the last, uh, well, last month is still holding. So we have this resistant line at the top here. We have tested it several times. We broke through it. We actually pierced it on Friday and then pulled back again. We did actually trade well above that resistant line for a very long time here in the in the beginning of January, but we fell down yet again. So we are actually trading into this corner here. So we have an additional support line down here. And as you can see, we're just going up and forward, up and down until we get into this corner. And then we'll have a move either to the upside or to the downside. And I've been saying all the time, I am very bullish on gold. This is what people are looking to when, you know, when things are going terribly wrong because they use it as a safe haven. And uh, therefore, I am very bullish on, on gold. We are going to be in this situation for months and probably also years where the government is going to spend more and more money. The, the central banks are going to print, print more, and that will be just more uh, even more bullish for gold. So at this point, we are going to see a rally up towards uh, the highs, very likely. If we break down from here, then we're going to 1800 and probably also even much lower than that to, to 7550 and to 7500. I just don't see why we should do that. Uh, furthermore, the US dollar is expected to fall and that will also be even more bullish for this. If you see the technical indicators, they are turning around. Not all of them are bullish, but they are actually turning around to the upside. So first target is 1900, 1950, and then to 2000 and beyond that. So let's look at silver. So as you can see, we have rallied quite significantly here at Silver. We are testing the, this uh, previous resistance, which is a massive amount of resistance that we have to get through. So this area here, we tried to test it several times back in the past. We also tested it here twice, and now we're testing it again. So we also have significant risk, uh, support underneath. So if we were to break down, then we would run into this area here, which also is another buying opportunity. Whether or not to buy into this right now, um, no, not really. I would wait until we fall back towards the 20 exponential moving average. A pull back, a turnaround there would indicate that we will go higher. If we break above this area and this area here becomes uh, supportive, then we that is a sign that we are going all the way to 13, 30. So as you can see, the technical indicators are all turning around. They are very bullish at this point. And this will also depend on the US dollar. It will also depend on gold. Usually gold um, moves before silver does, but yes, these are strange times. At the moment, silver is moving before gold is. But if the US dollar starts depreciating, then this will be very, this will rally significantly to the upside. So let's look at platinum. So as you can see, we did rally significantly on, on Friday and then broke down below the 20 exponential moving average. Technical indicators here are fairly all over the place. RSI is flat, CCI, CCI is bullish, Stochastic and MACD are bearish at this point, and we're underneath the 20 exponential moving average. At this point, if we go all the way down to the 50 and rally from there, then that is a sign that we could basically buy into this. Um, this could also be a sign that this was as low as this market got. And this was just overreaction um, and we needed basically a pullback. But of course, US dollar plays also an effect here. Um, I don't see why we should break down from here. I think that this was basically the buying opportunity that people were waiting for. And um, yes, and we'll most likely continue this rally to the upside. So, but if we break the 50 moving average, we're going all the way down to 1000. So let's look at pallium. So as you can see, we have fallen quite drastically and now it's becoming very, very interesting. 
So we have been trading in these highs and these lows. And as you can see, we have touched the very, very low here at Pallium. And what this usually indicates is that we are going to go back towards these highs. That's how this market has been behaving for a very long time. We ran into the 200 moving average uh, here at the 2.1. And uh, last time we basically were at 201, we rallied all the way up towards 2.5. And that is what I am expecting as well, the pallium to do this time. So, but if we break below the 200 moving average, that opens the door to much lower levels. It will go absolutely fall apart. It will fall all the way down to 2,000 here and also all the way down to 1,852, there, give or take. But I think this is going to turn around here, at least roll, basically pull back towards the. 50 moving average at, uh, at uh, roughly 2.35 and then beyond that in the long run to the very highs here. So let's look at aluminium. So aluminium had tried to rally, but uh, this is what I was afraid of. It rallied up towards the 20 and 20 acted as resistant and then it broke down again. This could be a sign that we are about to go and test these previous lows here. If they break, we're going down to 1900 here. And yes, that is uh, most likely what is going to happen. Technical indicators for, uh, for, alumin uh, for aluminium are uh, fairly bearish at this point. Uh, RSI is flat, CCI is negative, stochastic is negative, and also the MACD is uh, pointed to the lower levels. So at this point, I think that a target of roughly 19. Uh, 32 is uh, is realistic and also 1900. If we were to break above the 50 and the 20, uh, which is highly unlikely at this point, we will go towards these previous highs of roughly 2.018. So let's look at nickel. So as you can see, we tried to rally on Friday and pull back our trading now underneath the 20 exponential moving average and above the 50. Technical indicators for nickel are dreadful, so expect this to fall all the way down to the 50 moving average, and that will be uh, quite interesting because the last time we touched the 50 moving average was way down here at uh, 15.106, and then it rallied all the way up to 18.465. So a massive move to the upside last time we touched the 50 moving average, and uh, we'll see whether or not we can are going to do the same thing now. So no interest in basically entering it at the moment. Wait until it goes to the 50 and then buy into this with a target of these previous highs in the short run. So let's look at sugar. So as you can see, we did rally, uh, did fall down and then rallied all the way up towards 16, um, uh, 0 0.16 and then gave most of those gains um, away. Um, at this point, I think that we are going to go higher. We're trading above the 20 exponential. When technical indicators are turning around and we are getting into um, the season where you basically, sugar is going to be on high demand. So, so expect this to probably rally up towards the uh, 0.17. No one's just basically selling this. If we fall even further, we'll hit the 50 moving average and that will even be a better entry to this. So let's look at cotton. So as you can see, we have touched the 20 expansion moving average, rallied from there, and now this is going. To, now this is looking really, really, really interesting. This is a market that I am thinking about buying into when uh, the market opens. Uh, technical indicators are not yet turning around in the daily chart. You can look at the four-hour chart or the one-hour chart to see whether or not they become more bullish there. That will be the first sign that this is going to turn around. But if you get a candlestick that is above this previous candlestick here on uh, when the Monday session opens, and that is a really good sign that this market will go higher. Uh, next target will be all up, all the way up here at 0 0.70, uh, 0 0.85. So let's look at uh, Cocoa. Yes, we are still here in the middle of nowhere. Nothing is really happening here. We can put up a big box right around this area here. So this is basically the top, this is the bottom. We are basically in the middle here, middle of the, all of these moving averages until we break below the 200 and above the 1500, uh, 50 moving average. There's no, basically no reason why to enter this market whatsoever. 
I would think that we were going to rally from here due to the fact that also um, this commodity is going to be in high demand into the next few few months. So this should actually rally to the upside if I were to make my bet. But otherwise, it's just a pure gamble. No interest in basically entering until we break the 50 or break the 200. So let's look at uh, wheat. So we did rally significantly on Friday. We're up at 662. Um, at this point, it looks like we are going to go higher in this market. 691 is the previous highs. That is our first target. Uh, stop loss right underneath here at 641. That is a, a realistic trade to do. If we have another candlestick above here, then, then it's very certain that we are going to go higher. Technical indicators are looking very uh, positive for this um, uh, for this uh, commodity so we are most likely going to go higher if we break below the 200 moving average we're probably heading down towards the 50 at 622 and uh, beyond and after that all the way down to these previous levels of 567 there's no reason why we should do that so uh, we have a trend line here that we have to break and uh, well there's probably no reason to expect this to fall down to those levels again so let's look at the indices. People have been writing to me the last few days because they want to see the indices. So this is what the indices look like and they are not pretty to be fairly honest. Last week was uh, horrible for the stock market. Um, but seriously, we have been rallying since uh, the beginning of November all the way to the end of January. Uh, people have been earning a lot of money in this period here. It has been an enormous rally. So a pullback of this of this caliber shouldn't be surprising to anybody. Um, I don't think GameStop or Reddit or anything has to do anything with it. It is just technically a pullback because we needed a pullback. We can look at uh, the uh, Bollinger Band. You can see that we were basically touching the top of the Bollinger Band. Usually when we do that, it pulls back. At the moment, we are at the bottom of the bullish band, and it's very, very likely that we will rally from here. We are trending, uh, we're trading underneath the 50 moving average, but see, and we did that also over here, and then we rallied. We did that over here and also rallied. So I would pay attention to the bullish band, I will pay attention to these technical indicators. We have some room to the downside. It doesn't mean that we'll, we will go um, straight up in the air in the mon Monday session. We could actually. Uh, fall towards the 3,600. That is possible. Uh, below that, I don't think so. I don't think that we're going significantly lower than that. We could look at the Fibonacci retracements for um, this pullback. So we'll go down here and look over there. So we could fall all the way down to 3,615. So that's the first Fibonacci retracement. The next one is here, 3,539. And the last one is right here at 3,471. There is very little probability that we are going to, go to the 50 and the 61. To 38.2, yes, that is possible. That would look something similar to this and also to this drop. And uh, yes, that would be possible. Um, sometimes when we have these rallies like this, it falls towards the half of the rally. And that would be the 50 percent and that would mean that we'll go all the way down to 3544 before we continue our rally uh, rsi would be extremely low then these technical leaders would turn around at that point and there will be a lot of buying at that point as well so that is possible however long term uh, target is 4000 so if we turn around here uh, 4000 is definitely our long term target in the s p 500 so let's look at a dow jones which had a horrible day on friday and also uh, last week so we fell below thirty thousand at this point so we can look at the fibonacci retracement and you can see that we are probably not that far away from where we are going so twenty nine thousand three hundred. that's where a lot of buyers would come in and buy um, at 50, that's the 28,650, uh, enormous amount of buy. And then we have the uh, 200 moving average right here. So 
we have been rallying since the beginning of November all the way up here. We were down here at 26,000. So we have rallied roughly 5,000 points without a break. So uh, we needed a break at some point. So we are getting that at right at this point. How far will go? Well, I would look at the Fibonacci retracement. I would look at the RSI, which is at 38 at this point, is getting really low for the Dow Jones. We haven't actually been this low for a very long time. All the way back in here in November, basically, we were that low. So, yes, target here still is um, 31,500. Uh, we You should look at the four hour chart and one hour chart in order to see when this basically turns around. But this looks very nasty. But this move was a move of more than 5,000 points. So a fall of 2,000 points, that is very, very possible. And 2,500, also 3,000 points, that is also very possible at this point. So let's look at the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ is, uh, well, it didn't get uh, as hammered as the Dow Jones did. But we're trading above the 50 moving average. So the 50 moving average is here. So 12,600, 12,700, give or take. Uh, we still have a lot of room to the downside in the in the Nasdaq. Um, the same, we did not rally as much as the other indices did. But the Nasdaq has rallied significantly more when you consider this move compared to the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. So. Um, we rallied here roughly from 10,000, 11,000, all the way up to roughly uh, 13,600. So it's a massive move. Uh, it looks very similar to this one, but it most likely won't be as aggressive selling as this. This was just a parabolical move. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement for, uh, no, not Fibonacci, we look at the Bollinger Band for this, you can see that we were way outside here for several days and then it just bang, crashed. Same goes here outside several days. We were just waiting for this. If you look at my videos uh, prior to this, I was basically saying when we were right there that this was just going to end ugly. This was the, on the 28th of January. And we managed to stay outside of the Bullinger Band for five whole days. And that is very unnormal, to be fair honest. Usually it just touches the Bullinger Band and then just pounds to the downside. So... Um, we could turn around here. I don't think that is very realistic. I think that we're going all the way down to the 50 moving average at roughly uh, 12,700. Um, I actually put my stop loss right here, so I'll probably move my stop loss around 100 points to the downside uh, if we are to go lower from here. So um, yes, still my target is uh, 13,000, 14,000. That is where we are going. Um, all of this uh, news with uh, Reddit and so on, it will it will basically come to an end. Uh, Wall Street always wins. It is basically the casino, and the casino always wins. And uh, at the end, they also have regulators on their side. That's just the world uh, in how world of um, finance works. Uh, big guys always win. And the best thing to do is just to follow the big guys because there's all where all the money is. So let's look at the DAX. So DAX fell absolutely apart in um, on on Friday session, also on Thursday session, on Friday and first day of Wednesday and Friday session, we fell roughly from fourteen thousand all the way down to thirteen thousand three hundred. We were up here at the fourteen thousand one hundred and nineteen outside of the Bollinger Band. We're also outside of the Bollinger Band now, so it looks. Very dire for the Nasdaq, uh, for not the Nasdaq, but for the DAX. Uh, we did have this massive fall here in October and then rallied. So we did rally from 11,300 all the way up to roughly 2,000 points. So at this point, yes, it is about time that this had a pullback. And uh, if you look at the Fibonacci retracement, sorry about that. If you look at the Fibonacci retracement for this, you can see that we most likely will fall all the way down to uh, uh, 13,000 before we will see uh, enormous, enormous amount of buyers coming back in. So we are going to experience a pullback. It would not be unrealistic to fall down to this level here. If we turn around here, I think that that 20 exponential will, will act as resistant. And uh, yes, down here, a pullback 
or even to the 50, where it, that 200 moving average is, that's roughly 12,700, where we'll turn around and so on. So, um, yes, I'll do a, a pre-market analysis of the stock market um, tomorrow, also on Wednesday and also on Friday. And that is also available if you are uh, on our Patreon channel. Otherwise, you're welcome to write to me on Patreon and uh, good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.